It's like spiritual in here, man. That <laughs> well, music hopefully. is dope. I'm hoping. So thank you guys for tuning in to the podcast. I feel like I'm like like a, like a jazz station or something. <laughs> yeah. One of those Dave us with a sultry voice this morning. <laughs> Barry White. <laughs> uh, you don't know who that is? No. But I can He's... get the vibe. <laughs> I can get the vibe yourself. Barry White. All right, so hopefully you guys are having a great morning today. We've been talking about identity, callings, labels. And today we're going to talk about the identity thief or identity thief. Yesterday we talked about identity check. Check, check, one, two. Check, one, two. Checking your identity, verifying who you are. Today, we're going to talk about identity thief. And how many know, I'm pretty sure everyone at this point knows who that is, right? Who's the identity thief? But you know, it's interesting where the enemy, right? Satan himself is the identity thief. The Bible says that the thief, talking about the devil, comes not but to steal, to kill, or destroy. And he said, but I've come to give life and life more abundantly. So Jesus contrasts the two. He tells you what the enemy's goal is. And then he says what my plan is or what the enemy's scheme is to steal from you, to kill you, to destroy you. And then he said, I've come that they might have life. You might have life and life more abundantly. So then he kind of immediately gives you his plan. His plan is to give you life. And, um, but the enemy, but how many know the enemy comes even and uses primarily people and things, right? So there's very, in some ways, good things that are in our life or good people that are in our life that the enemy can work through. So the enemy goes about, another scripture says the enemy goes about, right, like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Mm. So he's he's seeking. And you know what he's seeking, guys? He's seeking, he's seeking. He's seeking identity. And, and, and let me explain that. He's seeking identity because the enemy is not a lion. We, we talk about this often. He's like a lion. The lion is Jesus, right? The enemy is like a lion. He's like, he, he's a wannabe lion. He's a, we used to use this word in the 80s called poser. You guys have heard that word? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Poser, right? Like he's a wannabe. Like he, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, that, he's a, he's just, he just dresses like, the, he dresses the part. He just, you know what I mean? He just, uh, um, Pastor June said, the pastor on Sunday, he said, uh, my campus pastor for Brandon on Sunday, the pastor on Sunday. There's like about a gazillion pastors on Sunday across the world. <laughs> that pastor on Sunday. But June, Pastor June Tavares, he's the Brandon campus pastor for Radiant. You know, he brought, he, he, it was so funny. And you guys, I don't know if you guys had this in school or not. We did. It was just so funny. He, I don't know how old he is. He's younger than me, but it still brought me back to memories where these guys would walk around school. Legit, I got a flashback of a, a, a guy walking around carrying a basketball, like carrying a basketball, you know, and he'd just be carrying a basketball, you know, dressed like a basketball player. Mm -hmm. And then you see him on the court later that day and he's just horrible. <laughs> And you, but he would carry a basketball. Like if you're going to carry a basketball, <laughs> you better be LeBron James. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like, right. I mean, like, why would you carry it? So like, you know, it's the same thing. The enemy is looking for identity. He seeks out identity. Let me just explain what I mean by that. He's like a lion. He's dressing the part. He's carrying the basketball like Jesus, but he can't play. But he's looking for identity, and that's who he's hoping for. So if he's like a lion and he seeks whom he can devour, let me explain my, let me just give you like something that might help you imagine this. If you watch Lion King, you know, you see the hyenas, what are they looking for? They're not, they're never going to go after the strong, right, antelope that's in the front of the pack. The one that can look at him and just kind of kick him in the head, right? The one that looks at him and goes, really? You're going to come after me? The hyenas are always sickly. You know, they're just kind of like they're, they're eating the, the garbage. And they're looking for the, the one who identifies with I'm not enough. The one that I, that's at the back of the pack, that's the small one, that's the weak one, that's, I, that's never truly coming into, hey, you know what? I'm an antelope. Hmm. And that's what the enemy does. And so he's an identity thief. He tries to, and, and so, and we say this often, he, 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 can't, he can't kill you or destroy you just randomly. The enemy's not going to come up. You're covered by the blood of Jesus. He can't just walk up to you and go, you know what, I'm going to kill you. Because the reality is you're covered by the blood of Jesus. His desire is to kill you or destroy you. But what if he can, what if he can kill your dream? 
What if he can destroy your destiny? What if he can steal your joy? You get it? And so he's trying to take your identity, and your identity is found in what? In Jesus. So in 2 Corinthians, we're started off this way, right? 5.17, this is the Amplified Version. It says, therefore, if anyone, anyone, okay, who's anyone? That's anybody in this room and anyone listening or watching right now is in Christ. If you're in Christ, that's you. And that is grafted in. This is what the Amplified says. That is grafted in, joined to him by faith in him as Savior. If, that, if that's you and you identify as a Christ follower, then, this, then he's speaking to you in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. It says, then he is a new creature. And the Amplified says, reborn and renewed by the Spirit. So it even explains what that means. You're a new creature. You are born again, and you are renewed by the Holy Spirit. The old things, the previous moral and spiritual condition, have passed away. Behold, new things have come because spiritual awakening brings new life. Okay, that's identity. In Ephesians 2.10, Amplified again, it says, For we are his workmanship, his own masterwork, a work of art created in Jesus Christ, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, ready to be used. These are labels. Matthias went around in the opening, right, giving labels out. God said you're reborn, spiritually transformed, you're renewed. And listen to this one. You're ready to be used. Wait a second. I'm not, my degree is not finished yet. Well, you're ready to be used. Well, you know, I'm still in training. Well, you know, you're ready to be used for good works, which God prepared for us beforehand, taking paths which he set, so that we would walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us. Can I just say this? And you're going to want to write this down, right? The noise of your fans don't make you, and the noise of your enemies won't break you. I'm going to say it again. The noise of your fans don't make you, and the noise of your enemies won't break break you. It really doesn't matter what label has been slapped on you either way. Mm. It matters where you find your identity. And so the identity thief, right, is who we're talking about today. And and so can I just say this? If you're a believer in Jesus, and regardless of your resume or your pedigree, regardless of your 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 history, regardless of what ancestry.com or what is that two, three and what is it? Uh, 23, 23, and me. 23 and me says, regardless of what your DNA, I don't care what percentage of what you are, what side of the tracks you were born on. I don't care how much money is in your bank account. I don't care what kind of education your parents had. I don't care if you lived in a, I don't care if you lived in a trailer. I don't care if you lived in a, in a, in a, in a houseboat. I don't care if you lived in a mansion. It doesn't matter. If you are a Christ follower, you are called to change the world. And I believe that, and we have to buy that. We have to believe that, right? The spiritual attacks that we go through in life are not because you, the enemy wants you to be broker than you are now, right? The enemy doesn't care about how much money you have. What the enemy cares is that you don't do anything for Jesus. And the spiritual attacks that we go through in life are based on who we are going to become rather than who we are currently or who we used to be. I got to say that again. The spiritual attacks that we go through in life, it's based on who we're going to become rather than who we currently are or what we used to be. In other words, the enemy would try to get us to question our identity so he can stop us from fulfilling fulfilling our God-given calling. And that's what his goal is. His whole mission, right? He wants us to doubt who we're called to be. And if he can destroy, remember, kill, steal, or destroy. If he can destroy our purpose, then he can more easily influence our behavior. Amen? Mm. Amen. Before we dive into this, I mean, we'll look at how Satan, you know, tempted Jesus, and, you know, he tried to steal even Jesus' identity. And um, we're going to talk about that in a second. But what do you guys think? So looking at it first, right, looking at this, I mean, we're called to change the world we received that after we, we, we accept Jesus as our Savior. Our life changes, right? We're gung-ho. Then the enemy comes and gives you a gut punch. He starts it right from the beginning. He begins to make you question your identity, right? He begins to try to get you to get off course, and he begins to throw doubt into the scenario. How many have ever bought into that? I have. Yeah, Multiple so. times. <laughs> it's like everybody's like, me? Like, me? Uh, <laughs> yeah. With that little emoji, that, the little one that reads it up. <laughs> I've got the I got the wavy hand emoji. Yeah. <laughs> wavy hand. Emoji. <clears throat> nah, I mean, um, probably about a year and a half ago, I was really challenged on um, the enemy was really getting at me because 
<clears throat> basically I was questioning whether I was a good father and a good husband for a while. Mm. Um, and it was really hard because, you know, I, I was working, you know, I work six days a week and it's like, yeah, but you spend no time with your family. How can you be a good father? How can you be a good husband? And it really got to me for about a month. Like I was like, I wouldn't say I was depressed, but it really got to me for about a month because he was really pushing on that button because that's something I'm very, like family is like the most sacred thing to me. Mm -hmm. So that was a really tough one that I went through not too long ago. And you know what, your question you with that, let's look at that for a second because there could be someone listening that can relate to that. And you know what he'll do is when he begins to question your identity, he makes you question your identity. He, He knows who you are. But he doesn't, so he's, he, it's not, you're right, he's not, he's not, uh, he doesn't believe that's who you are. He knows who you are. He, he wants you to question who you are. So you notice when that happens, immediately he brings in the cousins. And it's like he brings in guilt. He brings in condemnation, right? He brings, it, seriously, like he, he invites a, like a, like a house party, you know, of like, of like, you know, backwood, you know, cousins of of the enemy you know what i mean like now. it comes cousin guilt comes walking in you know you know what i'm saying like you know or or you've got like you know you, you know you've got like sister not enough sister not a sister not <laughs> enough sister not enough that's good sister not enough no one likes sister not enough yeah yeah sister not enough <laughs> that's good come on yeah you got anything matthias you're gonna let you gonna let her show you up there oh, sister not enough you got like she huh? comes up with stuff on the spot. I don't know how she does it. <laughs> that was funny. You could do that. What's that thing, that sound effect that you did with uh, Brett walking by in the bathroom that day and getting caught? What was that sound effect? Bro, oh, bro. It's like, brother, bro. <laughs> brother, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I mean, like, really. Negative Nelly. Yeah, negative Nelly. But you got like, brother, bro. Uh, you know, because like, you know, that, I can't even say it, right? You got to say it. Brother. Bro. There you go. <laughs> because, you know, and so wh- why would, because that was like. Even though it was a joke, it was like he just walked in front of the camera. It's like, really, man? It's like you got brother, really, man. You know what I mean? Like brother, <laughs> brother. Really, man. Brother. Bruh. You got those? You got, you got, you got aunt. We, we like, got to be I'm careful like, here. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, well, <that's, laughs> we got aunt, you know, aunt all in my business or whatever. You know, here's the deal. The enemy invites these things in. So when Mike was questioning his family, <laughs> Uncle Unworthy, the <laughs> Dumasani. <laughs> Uh, Dumasani said, "Uncle unworthy." I love it. That's funny, right there. I'll tell you what. Don't let your uncle uh, watch this. Uncle unworthy. You read about a Bible app called Family Reunion, and you know, Ooh, we we invite all these people in. That's Ooh, that's so actually uncle, a good one. uncle unworthy. That's I like so it. Good. I love that's it. Good. All right. So, but here's the thing. So, going back to that, you know, started with guilt. <laughs> Mike begin to question. You could, so, here's the thing. I don't. I don't question whether he's a good father or a good husband. You know, I see the things he does. I hear what he does. I see when his, when his little girl and his wife walk into the office. The enemy knows that you're a good father and a good husband. That's why he's after that. Right. Mm. So he gets you to question whether you're a good father or a good husband. So he's, he's an identity thief, man. If he can get you to question the strongest areas of your life, the rest of it's easy for him. Mm-hmm. You know, when I've played in churches, and I've obviously talked about this a lot, I'm a drummer, you know, there's times that I've questioned whether being in church and playing drums is really even worth doing it. And that was one of the strongest areas of my life. And like I said, once he can get you to question the strongest areas of your life, everything else is easy and cake. Mm-hmm. And That's I think good. he did it in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, when you look back to the story of Adam and Eve, mm-hmm. he said, did God really say? He made her question. It wasn't a matter of like he said, like, I mean, how stupid would she be if he, a snake just came up to her and said, hey, yeah. eat that. Like, Oh no, God told me not to. It wasn't just like a simple command that what he tried to get. snake came up to you? Oh my, I'd run. <laughs> I'd be screaming. I'd be like, no, first off, you're a snake. Second off, you're talking to me. <laughs> I'm out. Um, but I mean, he made her question, did God really say? Mm-hmm. And, you know, I've actually heard it taught before in that specific story of like, um, her desire was to, to be like God, obviously, not in a like in a bad way, but like her desire was to be more like God. She loved God and she had a relationship with God. And that's like all of our desires. So he made her question like, oh, is that really the way you're going to do that? Like you think like that's what God really said? Like, no, God just knows you'll be more like him if you do this. And so he really played on the desire of her heart to be more like him and twisted it. It is funny you you brought that story. I was just reading that 
in a in a plan I was I'm reading now <clears throat> in you version. I was just reading that passage this morning because it was in the plan. But it's no, something else I noticed in that plan. I didn't even think of that with regards to this lesson today. But when you brought that up, it's so relevant. But another in in, in just how the enemy comes up, like a roaring lion comes after your identity. You know, lies to you, right? Deceives it, twists things. And we're going to talk about that in in when he did what he did to Jesus. And he did. He did tell her. Did he really say? But you know how, what else he said in the very beginning of it? And I've never seen this before. He, he started the conversation off by saying, did, did God really say you cannot eat of any tree and any fruit in this garden? Mm. He, asked, he asked a question that he knew that she would come back and answer a specific way. He, he said, did God really say that you can't eat of any tree in this garden? And she said, no, we're allowed to eat of any tree, just not that one tree. Mm. So he started the dialogue off with mm. a, such a v- vast question, such a deception. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, think about that. That he, he knew that what God said, but he came in and said, did God say you can't eat anything in here? Did he really say that? And then she said, no, no, no. You know, God, God didn't say we can't eat anything. He just said we can't eat of the one tree. And if we do, we'll die. And then that's when the dialogue started. So the enemy doesn't, the enemy doesn't come up and say and, and hit you in the in the in the spot where you can see him coming he sneaks in he's a mm-hmm. thief yeah. so he's not an identity like a uh, uh, mugger i was going to say know. he's not like an identity mugger no he's not he's he, not you can't nice see point. him coming you can't see him coming he's a thief you know there's a difference in a, in a, in a mugger and a thief it's interesting cuz um to put it in a really practical sense um it's almost like an attorney asking leading questions Leading questions are designed to get you to answer a very specific way so that they can put they can box you into a corner so that when they ask the right question, you're going to answer the exact right way they want you to to make it mm-hmm. sound bad. What well, sales? I mean, yeah. it, 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 it hit me in, like I'd never seen it before because I'm in sales and in sales, you set the conversation up right. to benefit you. The difference is you're, you're benefiting the customer with a product. Satan was lying. You know, it's the epitome of like a, of a crooked salesperson or a, a manipulator. Right. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, and so, but, it, but it's still psychology and he's, and he played on that. So, but listen what he did here. So here's the thing. It's crazy. We see it with Adam and Eve or Eve and then, then Adam. And then we see it with, with us. Let's scroll down. Look at this for a second here. Matthew, you know, this is a passage we're familiar with, right? When Jesus went into the wilderness. I mean, here's the, now here's the thing. Remember this, like if we set this up. So Jesus had just started his ministry, but one of the things one of the things that's interesting is what happened m- just moments before, at least in the Bible, moments before Jesus went into the wilderness, what happened? You guys remember? Like, where did he come out of? What, what just happened? He, it was water right after, wine. huh? No, what, no, he had just come out of, the ba- out of the water being baptized. Like, for instance, in, the, the, in Luke, it talks about him coming out of the water, being baptized, and then what happened right after he got out of the water? The father... The dove comes down, right, the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove, and what does he say? This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Now think about that. What did he do there? What was that? What was God giving Jesus? His identity. Right. Mm. He said, this is my son. Now I don't know about you guys. If God audibly <laughs> said, Matthias, my son, you know what I mean? Like Mufasa, you know what I mean? Like Mufasa <laughs> voice, like I hear like, Come in the my class. son. Simba. You know, if he said that, I mean, you, you're going you're gonna to walk out of here like, you know, You've been walking out kind of puffy chest anyway after you've been working out lately, but you're going to walk out like, you know, with your chest kind of poked out a little bit. Like, yeah, y'all hear that? God said, Matthias, you want something? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, you're, you're not going to question, at least today, <laughs> at least today you won't question your identity. At least today you're going to walk around on cloud nine. Jesus received his identity audibly, like in a, in a dove came down on top of, you know, Holy Spirit in the form of a dove, like where it was visible enough to people writing in the scriptures. And so... His his identity was was sealed, but then he goes into the wilderness right after that, where Satan questions makes him question his identity. Mm-hmm. And if he didn't question it, it wouldn't have been temptation. So he didn't give in to temptation, but he was tempted. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like in other words, you got to understand something. He wanted to. There was a part of Jesus that wanted to turn the stone into bread. There was a part of Jesus that wanted to make the kingdoms his. There was a because that would have been the shortcut, right? Because he knew that he was, you know, he would reign on earth 
you know, you know, one day and he would, you know, reign in heaven and earth. But hey, this is a shortcut. I could just bypass this whole plan, you know, of going to this cross and you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so he was tempted to do this. And so the enemy's first strategy was to challenge the very identity of Jesus in order to provoke wrong actions. Like, I'm going to take him out by qu- making him question his identity. Mm. Think about that. He wanted to lead Jesus in an empty, selfish display of power into satisfying his own human needs outside of God's plan. He was trying to cause Jesus to sin, so he attacked his sense of identity. He knew who he was. So this is the thing. He knew who Jesus was, right? He didn't doubt that Jesus was the Son of God. Rather, he was trying to use this rhetorical statement. If you are, remember, hey, if if God really didn't want you to eat that tree from that tree, hey, wait, wait, wait. If God, wait, wait, wait. If he, if you really were a good dad, if you really had a big chest, (laughs) come on, somebody. Sam, if you really could speak Spanish. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We miss Sam. Sam's back over there. He was saying that, guys. So he said, if you're really the son of God, kind of a manipulative tactic. Mm-hmm. Back to that, back to that MO of the enemy, right? This is this is his this is his MO. To push Jesus into making a mistake. But here's the thing: Jesus didn't flinch. And he, by, because Jesus didn't flinch, it gives us hope. Mm-hmm. That's the whole thing, right? God's not saying that we're perfect because we're not. But guys, that he didn't flinch and he made it through shows that the enemy's tactics have a flaw. Yeah. Amen? So Jesus, I mean, he was secure in his identity. Come on. He was secure in his identity. So the, the enemy's attack failed because there were, no, there were no cracks of insecurity where the enemy's arrows of doubt could take effect. Amen? Come yeah. on. That's powerful Good. right there. So he uses the same strategy. It's the same go-to strategy today. And not because he thinks us we're weak or useless or we're nobody, because he really doesn't care about that. That's the thing we're forgetting. He doesn't care about that. He just wants to destroy, steal, and kill. He doesn't want. He doesn't care about how much money you have, about where you're going, how much what your business is doing. He really doesn't care. It's, that's too much detail for the enemy to care about because he'd have to care about that for everybody. And he's not God. He's not omnipresent. He's not omniscient. Right? He is just one enemy in one place at one time, and he can't do that. He can't do what God does. Yeah. You care about all things at all times. So he doesn't care about the details of you. He just wants you to doubt yourself. Amen? Mm-hmm. So what do you guys think? So as a, as a child of God, we have to have firm understanding of who we are. I want to read some, you guys want to read some? Is there any comments that we can um, read or anything that came up there? Uh, Tony Thorstad said, check your heart. Are you doing it for them or to them? Mm. With a good one. Um... Somebody said, uh, what's that, but like God, uh, let's see. Like God was withholding something. So I think that she, uh, she, she was, was commenting Eve. earlier on like the tree, Adam you know? Eve. Yeah. 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 Question. That's good. What do I you think? Say? I think it's interesting because I brought up the leading question before I was watching the show not too long ago and they were talking about leading questions. And the way the attorney made the example was, you know, how often do you beat your wife? And the guy replies, well, we never established that I ever beat my wife. Mm-hmm. And it's a very easy way because that's the way he does it. He's like, well, if, you, if, you're, if you're not a bad father, well, we never established that I was a bad father. Well, if you aren't a bad husband, we never established I was a bad husband. Mm-hmm. Like that's something you have to keep in the back of your mind. He'll sit there and throw it at you because you have to be aware that that's the, that's the exact way he's going to ask questions like that. Oh, well, you know, if you, are, if you were a good worship leader... Well, we never established that I was a bad one. Yeah. You never said I was. You're not saying I am. You're trying to get me to question if I am. And I think that's the biggest question. Um, somebody who, you know, something that I'm not vulnerable about a lot, but even if you met me, you'd never understand this. I really struggle with self-confidence in a lot of things. Mm. So that's one of the biggest things in my life that I've dealt with is, am I really good enough to do this? Am I really good enough to, and it's not even the enemy. It's my own self-questioning. Can I do this? Can I do this? Can I do this? Mm. Now I'm the first one to always say yes when something new comes up because I, you know, why not? I'll give it a shot. If I'm good at it, great. If I'm not, you know, at least I took the shot. But that's something that I've struggled with all my life is am I really good enough to do this? Am I really good enough to play at this church? Am I really worthy to actually be up here? Am I going through something right now that is causing me to not even be worthy to be seen in a leadership position? Yeah. So you buy into the enemies. So we look up the word identity as we wrap this up because I, I know we looked this up yesterday, I believe. 
I was looking this up. Can I say something real sure, quick? Sure. funny that I was thinking about. It's like, you ever had an outfit that you tried on one time, like three months ago, and then you put it on again, the exact same thing to the teeth, and all of a sudden you feel like, I don't like the way it looks yeah. right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, you know what I mean? Like, it's those things, like, it can be like a switch that happens that, like, you're not prepared for. It's mm-hmm. like, I'm literally, I picked this because I knew how good it looked, and now I'm at a hotel in Orlando, and this is all I got to wear. And oh, I so this happened, Ed. It has happened. <laughs> it has okay, happened, so, like, bro. Ed's just like, you ever, it's it's serious, bro. Ed's just like, you ever hypothetically I was have an outfit that you picked on when I was in Orlando this past weekend? I remember I went to when we went to like my first conference I ever went to, which was it was uh, digitally like nine, 18, 19, something like that. Right. And like it was in Orlando, and I had packed an outfit that I had wore like during the holidays or something. I was like, man, I look it was dope fresh, in this. right? right, right. And I got to this thing in a hotel, and I was like, I look like a substitute teacher. You know, it's funny. It's <laughs> like, like I look dope in this. Now I look like a dope in this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> Dope you know I mean? applies to both. <laughs> like Ezra, the, Ezra's, Ezra's hypotheticals. You ever bought a Pokemon t-shirt and skinny black jeans <laughs> with a yellow bandana, put it on, and been like, oh, this wasn't really the look? First of all, yeah, that, that was me this morning. Suspe- First of all, suspiciously it would be a Yu-Gi-Oh specific. t-shirt, if anything. <laughs> Future vintage. Future vintage. Yeah, Pokemon, there you go. Before you got outside, Pokemon jumped off your shirt. He's like, I ain't going to be part <laughs> of that. So identi- identity is the fact of being who or what a person or thing is, right? A, a, a close similarity or affinity. And so... Really, I think it's sum it, sum it up in, in many ways. It's like the enemy is an identity thief, but you always have an identity. Mm. It's who you identify with. It's what you identify with. So what his goal is, is to steal your God-given identity and replace it with his identity. Yeah. Replace it with a subpar identity. To get you to believe. He can't steal your salvation Right, you have to give. You have to give that. He can't take that. So he, what he wants you to do, is he wants you. He wants to steal your God-given identity, or get you to think that it's not who you are, and 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 slap a label on it. Like, you know, you could take, and this is this is like a name brand, right? I mean, like somebody can take. You go to Chinatown in New York. I mean. You know, there's 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 Bolexes instead of Rolex, right? There's <laughs> no there there are like I mean like you know like Gucci missing a C, like Gucky, you know, whatever, you know what I mean? Things like that, right? And there's 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 like Rada, you know what I mean? Instead Louis of Louis Crouton. Huh? <laughs> Louis, <laughs> Louis Crouton. Crouton. But Louis but Crouton. here's the deal. Then there's the really good knockoffs. There's the really good knockoffs where where they take the actual logo, the label. They take the actual label and put it on where you can't tell the difference. Mm-hmm. Like you, you carry it around and people are like, man, I like, I like your, I like your Prada bag or whatever, man. Where'd you get that? Oh, Neiman, Neiman Marcus. Oh, okay. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Neiman Marcus was, was the guy's name on the street. They gave like, you know, <laughs> it was, you know, say, think about it for a second, but it's the label on it. So here's, here's the thing. I think, uh, you know, so the enemy wants, the enemy can't steal your identity. I, I, he can, but he can cause you, he can cause you to slap a label on top of it. Do you get it? Yeah. Like carrying around a knockoff. I like Dumasami. Nike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nookie. No, <laughs> oh, that's fine. Go ahead. What were you going to say? Um, I mean, just to be really practical, I, I know we're running out of time, um, but... In, um, in Matthew, it talks about, it says, love the Lord, like Jesus said this, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Mm-hmm. And that the other day I was reading that scripture and it started to make me think like, okay, that means there's, he's identified three parts in, in us that have to like, we have to make ourselves like mm-hmm. aware of. And I was thinking about this and our pastor kind of talked something similar this to this, but then I read the scripture and it just like kind of all made a little bit more sense in my mind. But you know, it's one thing to believe in our hearts, like, yeah, I'm a child of God. But, like, we have to make up our mind, we have to make up our hearts, and we have to make up our souls. Like, we mm-hmm. have three parts that we have to, like, make up, like, we can't, our heart, I think, it can kind of go into that feeling, like, oh, I feel like, you know, I'm a child of God. Like, I, you know, life's going good, and da 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 But what's my mind going to say, like, when, mm-hmm. when I don't feel like that that day, when I feel like everything's coming against me, when I feel like... Um, you know, my identity is being attacked. Like you, I fell short in this area and this happened and this happened. Like we have to make up every part of ourselves. And, mm. ex- and it talks about in the Bible, like tearing down every thought um, that exalts itself above the knowledge of who God is. And I taking taking every cap- thought captive. And my brother actually has talked to me about this before, about like we put like 
we see that first thought and it's most likely, you know, because we are human, we have our flesh, like initially take that first cap thought, the ca- uh, thought captive, <laughs> cap mm-hmm. thought, um, initially take that first thought captive mm-hmm. and just revise it and be like, okay, is this thought of God? Okay, you know, I'm not going to think this or I am, it is of God. I'm going to think this and then let that be our reaction. Like I'm going to continually examine my thoughts, examine my mind because that's where we're transformed and that's really what we, when we have a mind that exalts Christ, you know, that comes. Yeah. You, you know something that's interesting. I know we're, we're out of time, but you know, that makes me want to say more because you, you, if you take the first thought captive, you, you, it's, you know, to go combat the enemy, combat the enemy and, you know, at his game, mm-hmm. but I mean, I mean, combat the enemy's game with God's game, I should say. And here's the thing, take the first thought captive. Because if, if you take the first thought captive, then there won't be a tenth thought. Mm-hmm. A lot of times what happens is, and Jesus didn't do this, he didn't entertain the first thought. Mm-hmm. I mean, he didn't. He took the first caught, thought captive. Then he took the second thought captive. And then he th- took the third thought captive. Every time he came, he took it captive. And so it's, it's an example to live by. So don't entertain the identity of the enemy. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and I know it's easier said than done, but it's a lot better to take the first thought captive than it is to have to come back 10 thoughts later. When it's big, a big thing in your life, a big struggle in your it life. It absolutely is. You know, it's... You and then you take get all the, the things initial, that happen. Exactly. Go ahead. Exactly. You're taking the initial thing, um, just the initial thought captive when you do that. Like, if you don't correct something when it's small, it's going to grow. What you feed mm. grows. What you starve dies. And so if you're starving the thoughts that God has given you... Mm. Um, that's not me quoting that, by the way. That was our pastor, Pastor Aaron. He has really good one-liners. Um, but what you feed grows. Like if you're feeding those thoughts, if you're in a, if you even allow the smallest seed to be planted, that's going to grow if you continue to allow it to be watered. Well, when the enemy comes and questions you again, if you already planted that seed, he's just pouring water on your seed, and it's going to grow, and it's going to keep growing and growing, and you're going to end up with weeds in your garden that are going to just knock the whole thing out. Um, but starve those thoughts. Don't even lo- allow the seed to enter. Be like, oh, that's not supposed to be there. Let me just pull that weed right out. Okay, that- choke it out. Exactly. <laughs> so put in the starve chat, it. Choke it out. Choke it out. Starve those thoughts and put take it there. and examine. Reverse choke hold. Exactly. Mike, get in. Good job. Good, good, good stuff. Thank you all for listening today. Tomorrow, kind mm-hmm. of a little heads up. You know, we're gonna finish up uh, the section we were on today. But tomorrow, awaken to your worth is the next subheading. So stay tuned for that. Thank you all for listening. It is Tuesday. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Song of the day is a completely different one. It's actually a spoken word track from one of my favorite vocalists um, that most people don't know about. Um, It's called Identity Thief from Maddie Montgomery. It's a really, really good track, and it literally goes perfectly in line with what we talked about today. So if you haven't ever heard it, check it out. We'll see you guys tomorrow. And on that note, we out.